So we gather in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our creator, the love at our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. God is with us. Here we find new life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus Christ is good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and liberty for those who are oppressed. Brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing to celebrate our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our savior, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him through this holy week in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. At this time, I'm going to offer the prayer of blessing for the palm crosses. God, our Saviour, your Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I'm going to unmute Leone, who is going to bring us our uh, Gospel of the Palms. Leone. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. Praise and glory to God. When they came near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage and the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming, coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples did, went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them across the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the word.
And so as the crowds praised Jesus, so we offer our praise to our Redeemer and our God in the words of the Benedicite Aotearoa. And that is on page 457 if you have a prayer book. Oh, give thanks to our God who is good, whose love endures forever. You sun and moon, you stars of the southern sky, give to our God your thanks and praise. Sunrise and sunset, night and day, give to our God your thanks and praise. All mountains and valleys, grassland and scree, glacier, avalanche, mist and snow, give to our God your thanks and praise. Yukori and pine, rata and kofai, mosses and ferns, give to our God your thanks and praise. Dolphins and kahawai, sea lion and crab, coral, anemone, pippi and shrimp, give to our God your thanks and praise. Rabbits and cattle, moths and dogs, kiwi and sparrow and tui and hawk, Give to our God your thanks and praise. You Māori and Pākehā, women and men, all who inhabit the long white cloud, give to our God your thanks and praise. All you saints and martyrs of the South Pacific, give to our God your thanks and praise. And the sentence for this day, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God of kings and criminals, your ways are not our ways. On the way to Jerusalem, with shouts we acclaimed you. On the way to Calvary, with shouts we condemned you. Mercifully grant us the way that leads to life, for you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as this is Palm Sunday and the entry into Holy Week, we now have a second gospel, the gospel of the passion. And Leone is going to bring us that as I... Thank you, Leone. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 27, beginning at verse 11. Praise and glory to God. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer not even to a single charge. The governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. 
the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? And all of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, He you who would destroy the temple and build it up in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him also. He saved others. He cannot save himself. Ha, he is the King of Israel. He can come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to, for he says, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. 
Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the word. I invite you to join me now as together we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is on page 461 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are moments that stick vividly in one's memory. And I can remember the excitement around my primary school when I was about eight, and we celebrated Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We all carried flax and crosses. And some of the senior students were even put in charge of very large palm branches. I'm pretty sure I would have just fallen over under them. I wasn't the most coordinated of children. Chests puffed out, heads high. We marched and waved and sang with gusto, making our procession through and around our school and out the school gates, and around the church. Our hosannas were particularly loud whenever we caught glimpses of people gathering and pausing to watch. There's nothing quite like being on show. Christ was with us, it seemed, and we could practically see him on his donkey. It seemed a very good day. Later that week, we were back at the church. It seemed to be quite heavy and cruel and unyielding. And I can remember the lead weights rattling in my hand. 
and I held what I was carrying very lightly because it felt as though if I gripped it properly, it might even cut me. It felt as though everyone's eyes were on me and there was no sound except for the slow and measured tones of the narrator as I carried the scourge down the long dim aisle to the front of the church for our school's Good Friday tableau. Handing it over, I practically fled back to my seat, shuddering as I heard the whip being brought down on the wooden floorboards for effect. It didn't seem like such a good day. Hands that had busily waved palm branches also waved a scourge. Voices that had cried Hosanna also cried crucify. Today is Palm Sunday, the first day of our Holy Week. On this day, Jesus entered Jerusalem. Here was the Messiah on display. And yet we know that Jesus was not the sort of Messiah that the people expected or wanted. And within the week, we see acclaim turn into humiliation and mockery as Palm Sunday leads us inexorably to Good Friday. The shadow of Good Friday transforms the light of Palm Sunday before our eyes. Jesus had tried to tell his disciples that his destiny was to suffer, to be rejected, delivered into the hands of his enemies, condemned to death, and yet to rise again. But they didn't have ears to listen, not about Jesus' destiny, and not about their own. Even so, though, Jesus rode into Jerusalem, rode into the stronghold of his enemies for the last time, a road that led to and through death. The reading of the Passion narrative today helps to orient us to the coming week and anticipates what lies ahead as we are caught up in that inexorable movement to the cross. In this way, it is hoped that as disciples, we might live into Christ's journey even more fully within ourselves. It is a journey that leads us to and through the cross, as through the death of Jesus, we see all death overwhelmed and overcome. And through the humiliation of Jesus, we see that all humiliation can be transformed. And all this because of the deep love of Jesus that was not broken. For there is a love stronger than death, that can withstand whatever the forces of evil might do against it. A love that can hold suffering even as it struggles to alleviate it. And Jesus' passion teaches us just what this great love looks like. Holy Week is a journey marked by a deeper and deeper letting go of things all things, except the very will of God. And as this journey unfolds for us in these coming days, each and every one of us are invited to walk the road with Jesus. So let us walk it. Let us walk boldly with Christ. Spoken in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'll now invite Murray to bring us our prayers. Thank you, Murray. Thank you. Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in faith 
with thanksgiving. When I say God of love, please respond with hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for your church and for your people throughout the world, and especially for those who lead your church. We ask for vision and energy for our Bishop Peter, our Archdeacon Indria, and for Ben, our priest, and Heather, our priest assistant. We give thanks for all that they do in service to the church and for our congregations. We give thanks for the modern technology that has allowed us to join together in this service today and the ability to communicate with our friends and families. Today being Palm Sunday, we remember the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, which later turned to death and humiliation. Good Lord, be with us this week as we prepare for the sorrow of Good Friday and the memory of the crucifixion. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in this troubled world of ours a peace where neighbors can live together in harmony. We pray for the people of Syria who have been displaced from their homes. We pray that there will soon be an end to the sectarian violence and political strife there. With the global pandemic in mind, we pray for those trapped in foreign countries and unable to return home. And we pray for the people of developing countries and those in third world areas who do not have the necessary medical backing to fight the virus with and little social welfare to support those afflicted. We pray too for the people of Italy, Spain, the US and those countries where the virus has had most effect. God of love, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our community and for those businesses who are struggling to survive and for those workers whose future is uncertain. We pray for those people who are susceptible to winter flus and colds and are worried and frightened was the possibility of catching the virus. We give thanks for the foresight of the government in bringing in the shutdown quickly before the pandemic had taken hold. And we give thanks for the workers in our hospitals, our supermarkets, pharmacies, and others who are risking their health and providing us with the necessities. We also give thanks for the police force who have taken on extra duties during this time. And good Lord, give us hope and faith in each other, looking forward to better times to come. God of love, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. We pray for the families who have lost loved ones lately and have been unable to attend services and burials. Lord, give all those who mourn peace and hope in their time of loss. God of love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we take time to pray in silence for ourselves and for those we love. Jesus, you rode a donkey into Jerusalem 
and the people waved palms and welcomed you with great acclamations. You spoke with passion and without fear while preaching love. But when the shouting dies, may we still walk beside you, even to a cross. Amen. I invite us now to join together and pray the Lord's Prayer, which you can find on page 465. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And at this time, I would ask Connie, who I'm just going to unmute now, uh, to play for us, there is a green hill far away. And number five. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. The Father will honour anyone who serves me. Let us pray. Help us to forgive as you have forgiven us, O Lord. Help us to trust you even when hope is failing. Help us, if we are called to suffer, to take up our cross and to follow you in your redeeming work for your love's sake. Amen.
may Christ the crucified convince you that God loves you and has forgiven you and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Before I offer the dismissal uh, and then unmute us all, uh, just a couple of notices from me and then I will check on notices from others. Uh, so from me, um, obviously we are entering Holy Week. Uh, we have a range of services and options planned. There will be a Good Friday service live like this. It will be at 3 p.m. Um, on Good Friday, this coming Friday. There will also be um, Easter Sunday uh, services at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, for us to join together uh, in the celebration of the resurrection. Um, and I commend those to you. For those of you who can get online, there will also be um, other homilies, short services, uh, things of that like to mark the other days of Holy Week, and they'll be available on YouTube and Facebook. We recognize that not everyone can get onto YouTube or Facebook, and some may not want to dial in here as well. Anyone with significant hearing issues, for instance, wouldn't uh, necessarily be able to be on here. And so to that end, we are also wanting to do um, an email or a post out of uh, Holy Week and Easter um, services, resources, sermons, prayers uh, to people. And we are hoping to do that this week. Um, but we need to know who needs those. So if you can let uh, myself or one of the wardens know if you or someone you know uh, would need uh, that. Uh, that sent to them um, and let us know if it can be sent by email um, or if it if it needs to be uh, posted as a hard copy we can post hard copies of this um, but obviously uh, our um, our stamp supply is not indefinite so if they can receive it by email all the better but if not we will have a, a um, some physical printouts for them we want to keep everyone connected and we want a uh, everyone to be able to share in the life and worship of the community over this week, whether that's through things like this and the computer or um, by praying with us at home um, with, with uh, printed information. Uh, Leonie uh, did uh, two wonderful gospel readings today. The gospel of the passion um, that she read is actually uh, as you will know from your Bibles, um, can also be extended out quite a ways. And if we were in the church, uh, we would have read an even longer version in, in parts. Uh, now, we can't do that on this, uh, this technology. It, it wouldn't work the best with all of us together. But uh, a few of us, myself, Danielle and Regan, um, did get together yesterday on, on Zoom and we recorded a reading of the full St. Matthew's Passion in parts. And uh, if you want to look at that at some point today or through the week, that's available on YouTube and Facebook. Um, I'm sure there are other notices from me. My brain has gone temporarily blank, uh, but, um, I'll leave it there apart from to say thank you all for joining us. Uh, I am sorry that the password option got locked on today um, and that the, the company don't seem to be allowing us to take it off as we had. Uh, if there's anyone you know uh, at the 10 a.m. <clears throat> who will come to the 10 a.m., um, we will obviously try to inform as many people as we can. We have emailed people, we have set up notices this morning um, that we are hoping they'll see but if you know people do please give them a call and let them know it's the same information as you use to get on at 8am and it is just the password will just be that numeral that number one 
um, if you're on the phone, one and then a, a hash key. Um, so uh, we'd appreciate you helping to get the word out. This is not the way we wanted to start the morning. But now I'll give the dismissal, I'll then unmute everyone and we'll see if there are any other notices and obviously we can have a, a, a talk together. So, Grace be with you. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Have a blessed week, everyone.